Hello guys, welcome to yet another episode of Speech Musings with Anit. So today we'll be talking about a very uh, important topic that is is your child a late talker and how exactly to identify if your child is one. So this is a very common concern that parents have. Okay, that is how exactly why is your child a late talker? What are the common causes for it? Okay, and how can a speech therapist help you with this particular aspect? So this is what we are going to see in the coming slides. So moving on to who is a late talker. So you must have already heard about this term late talker or late bloomer. Okay, late talker is a child who speaks later in childhood. So that means that he is not talking he or she is not talking according to the exact age of the child. So uh, instead of uh, you know a child who starts talking like in um, maybe he'll say his first word only by one and a half years or only by 2 years so that is called as a late talker. Now here you can see that other milestones the child is completely fine. So everything hearing, cognition, cognition is you know thinking skills and playing, interacting, physical development, physical milestones are all very normal. Everything is according to the chronological age and also they have a very good understanding of language, a very normal understanding of language according to their age. So understanding of language is also called as receptive language. So we can see receptive language is also very fine in the child. Now moving on to the causes. Now causes for uh, this late talking is that one of the first cause you can say it is completely unknown. The main cause or the root cause for a child being a late talker is actually completely unknown. Okay, so here parents always have this thing that you know they are seeing, they are scrutinizing the child. Uh, Uh, and they seeing that everything else is fine everything is fine thinking is fine physical development is fine playing interacting social skills everything is fine only that the language area has a delay and that too especially in expressive language delay so expressive language delay is where the child cannot express his needs or his wants through verbal expression so that's called expressive language delay so the child the parents will have a lot of worry and that's very natural that's quite natural very normal okay the parents you know they start comparing with other children they find that okay the other child is of my child same age but he's understanding he's expressing my child is not expressing or you know he's finding it very hesitant to speak so that are some of the common concerns of parents but here you can see that there are several risk or contributing factors for your child being a late talker and parents have to take note of this because it is very very important okay so once again i can tell you the main cause is completely unknown but yes there are several risk or contributing factors to this so we'll move on to the risk of the contributing factors as you can see the one of the first risk factors is genetic or hereditary okay so genetic or hereditary you must already be knowing that is if someone in your family uh, you know when they were small they had uh, talked late okay or uh, you know similar conditions were there then yes the child can speak late that is if the father had talked late or the mother had talked late yes the child can also talk late that is one important factor or it can be some other genetic factors also the second thing is that disorders like autism down syndrome and other behavioral deviations so uh, this is like if the child is having down syndrome or the child is having autism or anywhere in the autism spectrum okay or any other behavioral deviations yes obviously they can have a, a slight amount of expressive language delay and also uh, if the child is having any kind of hearing issues So hearing issues is obviously if the child is having any kind of hearing impairment or any other kind of hearing issues then obviously yes the child will have an expressive language delay also. And the last factor is uh, then there is an overall development delay. So in some children you can see that uh, right from the physical development onwards there is a lot of delay. So maybe you know they uh, start standing uh, or they start walking at a very later age. okay so that is when their overall physical development is also affected so what happens when the physical development is affected then you know, you can see that slowly slowly the speech development also gets affected you know speech starts coming very late in the child and that is called as overall developmental delay or that is also called as global developmental delay okay so these are some of the main factors or some of the main risk factors uh, for your child becoming a late talker now there are certain contributing factors also now risk factors are different contributing factors are different contributing factors is mostly your environmental factors 
okay so these are some of the environmental factors that you can see okay so the first thing is that older sibling is doing all the talking in the family so uh, just imagine uh, in a family there are two children the older sibling is the one who doing all the talking okay so whenever the child whenever the younger sibling needs something okay uh, he or she just has to point to it the older sibling will do the talking or will do the expression or the gestures or whatever and he will he or she will get it for the child so uh, mostly in the family this child is the only one who's talking and the younger one is not allowed to talk or he is not being prompted to talk so in that conditions yes obviously he will have a delay he will have a speech and language delay that is very obvious now second factor is that parents who meet all needs of the child promptly this is a very very common factor that can be seen in all of the households okay so here you can see that right from the time when the child was small the mother has been understanding uh, the needs of the child just through the uh, you know the fact of crying so the child just has to cry and the mother will understand yes my child is hungry or sleepy or whatever it may be so that actually continues into uh, the time when the child is a toddler also or the time when the child has to exactly speak or when he has to ask for something the parents do not give an option for that or they do not prompt the child to speak he or she just has to point to the thing that they need and the child uh, the, sorry the mother will immediately give it to the child so at that time what happens is that the child is not allowed to speak there or he is not being prompted to speak at that moment what happens is that uh, in the child's uh, mind there is no concept of asking for something to get his needs wanted so basically he does not have the con uh, concept in his mind so he does not understand the language the power of language or he doesn't does not understand how to use language and obviously so there will be a delay which can be seen or the, this might lead to conditions where he starts speaking only at a later age so that is the second contributing factor third factor is that reduced or very less language stimulation yes language stimulation is where you prompt the child to speak or you keep you know encouraging for every bit of language that he speaks okay so that is not there in the environment or you're not prompting him to speak you're not encouraging the child to speak in those conditions yes the child can have a um, delay in talking and the last factor is called as bilingual household now bilingual household meaning uh, in a family okay there are lots of people and they are talking two different languages so two different languages maybe hindi and english together or it can be malayalam and english together so in those conditions what happens the child gets confused there are some children who can grasp both the languages equally but there are a lot of other children who cannot grasp two languages at the same time so what happens is a lot of confusion that is created okay and they do not know what word to use for what item okay sometimes you can see that there is a lot of confusion or there is a lot of mix and match that happens okay the child itself is very stressed out he is very pressurized he doesn't know what language to use in the family so always remember in these times or whenever you are dealing with a child try to use only one language especially if you find that the child has some kind of a delay try to always use only one language in the child so these are the uh, very important risk factors and the very important contributing factors that parents and caregivers have to take note these four points that i told right now are very very important please take these into note okay so as i said some of the features that we can see in children a uh, child has good receptive language but very very hesitant to speak so you might be thinking okay my child is very hesitant he is not you know how much ever you prompt him he does not want to speak uh, so he he gets very irritated when he wants to speak or he just shows gestures that's it only gestures pointing or joint attention that's the only thing he does he does not want to speak anything out and he uses more of gestures or pointing to get his needs done that's the only thing he does he does not want to speak okay so these are some of the features that usually late talkers exhibit and also uh, he finds the use of language very irritating he prefers not to talk he does not uh, want to talk in any of the situation how much ever you prompt him how much ever you command him he does not want to talk because he's very irritated with language and also he has very limited vocabulary so obviously when he's not prompted when he's not encouraged or when he does not want to speak Uh, obviously he will have a limited very limited vocabulary to speak these are some of the features that a uh, child uh, you know who ex uh, children who exhibit late talking uh, show okay 
So I hope you have understood all about this. That is the uh, risk and the contributing factors and what are some of the features that can be observed in these children. So you must be asking me now as a parent, what can I do to help my child if my child is a late talker? So the first thing that you do is please, please do not panic. Okay. So the reason you do not have to panic is that research says almost 10 to 15 percentage of toddlers are late talkers. So you can see that's actually a huge percentage, right? That's a huge percentage of toddlers who are late talkers. So if in case as a parent or as a caregiver, if you are worried very much, okay, you can please meet a speech and language professional for detailed information. Okay. Discuss about starting speech therapy and its outcomes. So as a parent, you first have to go to a speech and language professional. They will do an evaluation. It can be a formal one or it can be an informal one. And they will tell you uh, if your child is actually a late talker or if he actually has a speech and language delay. So by the age of two years and all, uh, maybe you, know, you won't be able to exactly assess if it is a speech and language delay or a late talking. But then by the age of three, three and a half years, still if the child is not able to, you know, put up words together or you know, speak in sentences and all that, then you should definitely be worried and you can meet your speech and language professional for some detailed information. Okay. So once you find out that there is a problem, please start with speech therapy and also discuss with your speech therapist about the possible outcomes and how is the progress of the speech therapy going to be. And one thing that I want to tell you parents is that you need to give the late talker extra attention at home because obviously you know that you know the child is not willing to speak or he's very irritated to speak, he does not want to speak. So in those conditions, sit with the child, give your undivided extra attention to the child, give him lots of language stimulation and obviously there'll be a dramatic amount of improvement that can be seen in his expressive language. And the next important thing that I want to tell you is that do not, do not pressurize the child. Okay, do not create, uh, you know, unnecessary stress on the child. Do not create unnecessary pressure on the child. Let it be very natural. Let the speech and language development of the child be very natural and go in its own pace. That is what you have to do as parents and it's very important. As you all know, your child's mental health is much, much more important than his development and his grades and whatever it may be your child's mental health and mental well-being is very important so be encouraging throughout the journey be very uh, you know loving and caring and motivating throughout the journey and that will help the child to grow much better in his development also very important thing is that you have to discuss with your speech and language uh, therapist about you know various speech stimulation techniques that can be used uh, for the child okay once therapy starts they can help you with it Okay, and do the same at home. Whatever the speech therapist shows to you or demonstrates to you, make sure that those language stimulation techniques are also used at home. The main reason why I want to tell you is that we are there, we as speech therapists are there with the child only for maximum 45 minutes to one hour. The rest of the day, the child is with the parents. So yes, extra attention has to be given by the parents to the child. So whatever the speech therapist tells you or you know shows you, uh, based on the uh, language stimulation techniques, do the same at home for a longer amount of time and that can help in the longer run. So encourage your child to use language in every situation. Every, every single situation with a child if, that you have in your house or in your family environment, make sure the child is very much involved. Okay, he has to be involved in every activity, even for the slightest of things he has to speak or he has to respond verbally, not through pointing, not through gestures. Encourage him to speak verbally. He has to understand the power of language and how language can help him communicate further in life and, you know, communicate further for his needs or his wants. He has to have the concept in his mind. Or the child has to understand that concept that yes, language is very powerful, is very powerful and I need to use this in my future context also. So that is one thing that has to be pushed into the child's mind. So for that, parents are the best, you know, the best teachers and the best role models. We as speech therapists come secondary. You as parents or you as caregivers are given primary importance 
in this particular role and you have to if you do your role properly if you do this particular thing properly then i guarantee you that you know there'll be a dramatic amount of improvement in your child's expressive language so always remember about these two things these two things are very important encouraging your child to use language in every single situation in your house and the second thing is that the child should understand the power of language now how can a speech therapist help yes this is the second question that uh, you parents might be asking us so how can a speech therapist help the first thing i can tell you is that as we as speech therapists we can advise parents on the right tips to encourage language stimulation at home so as as i had mentioned before i had talked about language stimulation techniques Okay so this language stimulation techniques or how to you know what are the different ways by which you can improve your child's expressive language i had already done a video on that okay i can link it down below if needed so please do watch that and you can get an idea of what exactly to do about it okay so these are the different language stimulation techniques you can do at home we can give you tips on that too okay we can demonstrate these techniques once therapy starts so uh, this is why we always insist that in the initial days of therapy parents have to sit with the child so the speech therapist can tell you also about how exactly to go about with uh, these techniques in uh, at home okay and we'll provide the much needed push for using language so that is our basic aim or to help you throughout the journey or to guide you throughout the journey so that's you know giving them much needed push for using language and also we support parents or caregivers throughout the journey so as you all know we are just you know uh, we just give guidance or we just help you parents throughout the journey but you are the ones who have to you know help the child with the complete development and the complete growth of speech and all that so this is how a speech therapist can help you so that's all about it you understood i hope you understood about language and how exactly uh, you know late talkers uh, how do they affect how how is language affected by it and how as speech therapists how can we help so make sure that once again make sure that your child is not stressed out he's not over pressurized please give him the natural taste which he, he he can go through and also as parents make sure that you are giving your undivided attention okay your complete extra attention to the child sit with him for almost like uh, you know, one hour in a day or two two hours in a day give your complete attention to him teach him how he can improve his language teach him how he can improve his expressive language his receptive language and in all ways you know using all of these language stimulation techniques that i had talked about and uh, talking with the speech therapist talking with the speech therapist in each and uh, you know throughout each and every journey of the child be very helpful and do not panic that is the most important thing do not panic because as i said most of the children now are late talkers okay they're also called as late bloomers or late talkers so it's not a uh, you know big thing to be panicked it was not a big deal basically but but also you should not you know consider it very uh, a, a very small thing also you have to make sure that you know this late talking should not go into a further speech and language delay so that is what you parents have to look into do not let the uh, this late talking go into a further speech and language delay for that your help is very much needed so if you have any queries please feel free to mail us for any help or guidance okay and you can mail to this uh, mail id that is info.arspeechtherapy@gmail.com if you have any comments you can please mention it down below and uh, i hope you'll be waiting for more videos in the future stay home and stay safe